Hey Skyfarers, Arkham Admiral here to talk to you about the one set, the one box of models that I think everyone new to starting a Caradron Overlord's army should buy. And that set is Thundrix Profiteers. Um, I've talked about this set before in some of my other videos, such as the video about whether to buy the uh, Christmas Battle Force box or the video about building engine riggers or Sky Wardens. Uh, but I want to do a dedicated video to it um, because it's something that I feel is a little bit overlooked by new players and um, for another reason, which is the um, the way that it helps you with building your Caldron Overlord's force is not necessarily obvious and I felt like it uh, deserves its own dedicated video. Um, sometimes I get asked for advice. Um, unsurprisingly because i have you know a youtube channel and that's what things you get comments saying oh you know what should i do um in certain situations and you know what should i buy and then not just because of having a youtube channel but just generally you know on facebook and whatsapp and discord now people will ask for advice not necessarily always you know for me personally but just you know they're generally asking for advice and when i try to give advice i try to tailor it to the individual person um if someone wants to know, should I build engine riggers and what weapons should I uh, give them? The answer is different to if they've got six or if they've got 18, or if they um, want to know, you know, what uh, they should do when they're building Grunts of Thunderers. Again, it depends whether, have you bought five, have you bought 10, have you bought 20? Because the answer is different. Um, and, you know, some people say, oh, I, you know, I'm okay with magnetizing, or I don't mind doing a little bit of magnetizing. Some people will say, oh, I absolutely don't want to do any magnetizing. So always try and tailor the advice uh, to people a little bit. Um, so then what I find myself often asking is, do you have Fundrix Profiteers? Because particularly if someone doesn't want to do any magnetizing, that really does change the answer a little bit, and it um, helps give a little bit of a nuance to the answer. Um, so let's jump into what you actually get in the set and go into a bit more detail. Um, so, um, funding properties, you get five models um, and it's 15 pounds. So, first of all, the main reason for buying it is just absolutely great value. Um, you basically get an A for chemist and then some additional models. Now, normal A for chemist um, will cost 17 pound 50. Um, so that's a £2.50 saving straight away. But you can't buy these other models individually. Um, but if you were to buy, you know, you've got a, a Grand Stop Thunderer here. Now, you would normally buy Thunderers in a box of five. And then you've got a Sky Warden here. You'd normally buy them in a box of three. Both those sets are £27.50 each. And then you've got two Arconauts, which you normally buy in a set of 10 for 30 pounds so if you worked out the approximate values for each of them this whole set is worth 38 pounds plus then you also get some dice and cards and stuff so it's just amazing value for money from you know just from the, the models you get um for the amount of money you're paying for so just for that reason at all alone there's no downside at all to buying this set um so let's look into more detail about what you actually get in the set. Um, firstly, I mentioned um, you basically get an Aether chemist. So you get a guy called Bjorgen Fundrick, uh, which is this guy here on the left. Um, and when you buy this set, if you're building a Caldron Overlord's army, you probably won't buy, uh, build him or play him rather, sorry, as Bjorgen Fundrick. And you won't use the other models to play as Fundrix Profiteers, you will play him as a regular Ava Chemist, which is uh, this model on the right. So you can see the models are slightly different, um, but functionally they are pretty much the same. Um, one of the important things about using standing models or counts as models um, is, first of all, base size. So you have they're on the same size base. They're both on 32 millimeter bases. So that's a great start. They are approximately the same size um, and uh, similar looking enough. They And then the other important thing is on every war score, there's a description of a model. So it will say what it has. So it will say like an Aether Chemist 
uh, as an aferic fumigator and then it'll also say the other weapons that they're armed with um in which case it's um i can't remember exactly what it's called now but it's basically just like his monitoring equipment in his other hand so you can see that both models here have got a fumigator um and then they both got these um basically sort of monitoring equipment that, um that they use as um and so in terms of if you're going to play him as an ape chemist does he represent the model of course he does because he's got the same he's got the things that the war scroll is mentioning um and so you can basically put him on the table and say he's a chemist and 99 percent of the time it will be fine um if you come up against a another cauldron overlords player of course they will recognize possibly that it is you know the Bjork and Thunder model rather than an Aether Chemist. Um, but of course, if you don't have Bjork and Thunder in your army list, and you don't have Thunder's Profiteers in your army list, then and you do have an Aether Chemist, and you don't have another model that looks like an Aether Chemist, then of course they're going to go, oh, well, that's your Aether Chemist then. And most players will be absolutely fine with this. It's not like you're taking a uh, Vampire Lord on Zombie Dragon going, okay, here's my Aether Chemist. You know, it looks like an Aether Chemist, and to be honest, there's a lot of people that have a very large number of people that have bought this model purely to use it as an Aether Chemist, um, because it's just a cool alternative sculpt. And when this set originally came out, uh, was back when there was the old book of Galadron Overlords, and people were running, say, free Aether Chemists. And so having one that looked a little bit different and had a slightly different sculpt was a way to make your army a bit more interesting rather than three models the same. Um, these days, typically, people won't be running three Aether Chemists. You might only want one, uh, typically run one. Sometimes you might see two, but um, it's still nice to have a, a different sculpt if you are going to potentially get two. And um, generally speaking, I think the one on the left, the Bjork and Thunder version, is a little bit cooler anyway. He's got a more dynamic pose. He's got that interesting scenic base. Um, you can see at the bottom here with his one foot up on this rock and stuff. Um, and, it, you know, his pose with the fumigator is cooler. So, yeah, it's a nicer model, in my opinion. Um, as for whether you, you want a chemist or not, when you're a new player starting Cauldron Overlords, I think you absolutely do want to get an Aether Chemist. Um, one of the most common competitive builds with Cauldron Overlords at the moment is to use a chemist with an artifact of power called Spell in the Bottle, um, where people will normally use Warp Lightning Vortex, uh, but you can use any in the spell to go in there. And uh, commonly what people will do is they will use the Barak Zilfin uh, Hero Phase move to move a Sky Vessel, and it will fly high in the Hero Phase, and then use Spell in the Bottle after that to uh, get extra range on the essentially on that casting attempt for the spell um so it's a very commonly used model so therefore getting one as one of your first purchases as a new player is excellent and even if you only buy fundric profiteers um to use bjork and fundric as your chemist you still save some money um but that's not where the um the best reasons for buying the set really comes in. I think when we look start looking at the rest of the models in the set, which are here, um, then that's where the, the real benefits of this set come in. So let's start on the left, first of all, um, with um, this one, which is basically, uh, I think it's called Dead Eye Lund, but basically he's a Grunstock Thunderer with a rifle. Now, I haven't done a video on building Grunstock Thunderers yet, um, but I'm planning to do one. And whenever people ask me about building Grunstock Thunderers, I'm always asking, well, did you buy Thunderous Profiteers? Because it's having that extra guy with a rifle there is really handy, um, even if you're planning on magnetizing. Um, because the weird thing about uh, Grunstock Thunderers is that they're relatively easy to magnetize for most of the weapons. You know, you just put one magnet in the shoulder and then where the arm joins the shoulder, the shoulder part of the torso. And that's simple, except for the fumigator. Now the fumigator has one, a third bit. So you, you know, on all the other models, you have the torso 
and the arm and the gun is also part of the arm um but with the fumigator you have a third bit which is like the upper part of the arm from the elbow to the shoulder and it's a weird little triangle shaped bit and you don't you only get one of those so depending on whether you're building a fumigator or a or the rifle you would glue that section of arm to the section of the lower part of the arm that's holding the, and the gun which is another bit and you glue that bit to that and then glue it to the um the shoulder but um if you want to magnetize then you have to position you have to glue it to the torso first and then scrape some bits out to get a nice area to drill into and then and try and uh, yeah and positioning that onto the torso is quite difficult without having it attached to the lower part of the arm so basically you have one particular weapon that's a lot more difficult to magnetize than all the others it's the long and the short of it um so and then that one particular uh, weapon is one that you could use whether you're running uh aether shot rifles or if you're running the mixed special weapons because when you run ground stock thunderers typically people will either run as many of the mixed special weapons as they can um because they get a buff where if you play them together they get this like boat they get plus one to hit basically if they're not inside a ship um and or they run all rifles because they've got extra range and they plan on keeping the models inside the ship and then but the fumigator even though it is like a, an alternative to a rifle it's not part of that group of models uh or group of weapon types that gets the plus one to hit so it's something you can use in in either build loadout and the reason you take a fumigator would be to get its ability which is to make enemy enemy models minus one to hit you um so it, it doesn't work in the in a ship but at some point if you have models with rifles in a ship you will want to get them out at some point just purely because the objective side of the game um but then you know some people might not want to do that so and when you're building your, your grand sort of funders if you're particularly if you're not magnetizing you you're committed if you once you build it you then you end up playing it and you don't want to buy an, another 27 pound 50 set to replace one model that's built so if you've got fund, uh funders profiteers then you can just build one of your when you first get your grand sort of funders you can build one of them with a fumigator without any worry because you can use the guy with the rifle from funders profiteers and slot that into a unit of Grand Stock Funders, and you've got then an option. Um, so it means A, you can have this extra option without having to do magnetizing. And even if you're okay with doing magnetizing, then you can use it to swap for the model that is the hardest one to magnetize. So whether you like magnetizing or not, it makes your choices with building your grand stock funder is easier essentially um the second uh one of the other models you get in the set um the second one we're going to look at is this uh sky warden um can't remember what his name is but it doesn't really matter um but basically he's a sky warden with a vulcanizer pistol you can't actually see the vulcanizer pistol in this picture because it's on his hip he's not holding it like a normal sky warden was but um it does have one um and the, as mentioned in my previous video about building engine makers or sky wardens if you are building your sky warden slash engine makers using their special weapons their long range guns then two of the models in, in out of the three from a, a unit of three models will have those big range long range guns and then the third model basically either has to be a sky warden uh with its sky pike and pistol or an engine rigger with saw and pistol. And so if you have Funrix Profiteers and you have this model here, then you can just build that third model as an engine rigger with a saw and pistol. But that one unit can now play as two different units in the game, which means that um, you can either use it um, in, say, Iron Sky Command to be part of that battalion and get lower drops, or you can use it 
you can have a Sky Warden unit in your uh, Grand Stock Escort Wing if you want to and get lower drops. So, again, it does give you um, more flexibility with building your uh, Entry Riggers and Sky Wardens, which is great. What's not, not, what's not to love about extra flexibility? Um, and then last but not least, you get two Arcanauts. Uh, so you have one here um, with just a Arcanaut cutter and pistol, and then one here with a volley gun. Um, these are essentially just, you'll just end up using these as alternative sculpts. Um, the same thing as um, using uh, Bjorg and Fundric as a chemist. Um, when you're building your Arcanauts, it really doesn't matter how you build them that much as long as you follow the rules obviously um whether you use all of the special weapons or none of the special weapons or you don't bother using one of the um one of them for instance such as the sky pike some people drop that out but honestly in the grand scheme of things it's not going to make a huge amount of difference to your games i would personally say that you want to build as many of the special weapons as you can you get the extra range from having the sky hook and the volley gun um but like i said it doesn't make a big difference but this guy here um with the uh volley gun that's just a really really cool sculpt and depending on the list you're running uh you end up building towards you might have three units of arcanals so just having you know, one of in one of your units, one guy that's got a slightly different sculpt, just just going to be cool. Just makes it a bit more interesting. And then the other thing that these two models are really handy for is when people talk and give advice to new players. Um, one of the big things of advice that people often give for people that are new to game and starting a new army is to do a test model, a test model for your paint scheme. So you um and so that's what these models are really great for because you can test out um, a whole paint scheme on one of these models probably um this guy on the left is he's the one i test on because um he's basically almost like a, i want to, i don't want to say a throwaway model but if you test your paint scheme on him and then it's rubbish You've not lost out on anything at all. Now, equally, you could just build a normal Arcanor and build, test it on him. If you prefer his sculpt to, it, to one of the Arcanor sculpts, then, you know, either way around. Um, it doesn't matter which way around you do it. I just wouldn't test my paint scheme on this guy because he's, you know, a really cool sculpt, as I said. Um, so, I, you know, I wouldn't want to risk messing up painting him. But it basically means that you can paint a model without any risk and test out paints can test out the techniques and um, that sort of thing and um, it won't matter uh, it's not you wouldn't have to try and paint over your or lots of layers of paint or try and strip the paint off afterwards if you don't like the scheme and if you do like the screen the scheme that you come up with then great um but it just again it's just really handy to have that extra model to test the scheme out on so that's it really that's why i think thunderous properties is a really good set to buy because it's cheap you get a cool model that is an a for chemist that's just cheaper than a normal chemist um and looks better in my opinion you get a grand stock thunder which gives you more flexibility in building your grand stock thunders when you come to building them um which i would recommend means that you can build a fumigator um and then you get a sky warden which then also um gives you more flexibility on building engine riggers and sky wardens and last but not least as i mentioned you get some our call our call our which means that you can do some test test paint schemes on your models so that's it um hope you found this video helpful and you'll consider going out and buying thunderous profiteers if you're new to getting uh starting a carriage on overlord army um if you found the video helpful please hit like and subscribe but uh until then i'll see you again next time Skype.